All right, so new day, new video. We're getting closer to the end. Um, railing is pretty much complete except for the gate upstairs. Now I've got the extension ladder up there because I have to go up there and re reprogram the uh, RRD Pros so that Matt can tie it in with the system. So we had to borrow an extension ladder from, uh, fortunately the LZ's, LZ compound had one. So I've got to get up there. Um, it's safer than it looks. So I'm gonna do that. I'm also gonna install doors today, try to get the rest of the baseboards done. Um, let's see what else is going on today. Uh, east side is finishing the handles on the cabinets and probably the, the toe kick, the black toe kick. And we are still waiting for our tile wall guy to show up so we can get this done so the painters can paint. Um, carpet is scheduled for Monday, Tuesday of next week upstairs. So that's kind of where we are. I'm gonna, just gonna jump around project to project. We see we did our registers. I got those painted flat black there and here. So we got those installed this morning. People were really concerned about that. Yeah, I think they look good. Um, the only thing I'm not convinced on, and you can say, you know, let us know in the comments what you think, but we, Matt wanted to do white receptacles on that back wall there. I kind of think they should have been black but yeah. he wanted white. Now, more than likely things are gonna be there in front of those, but I just think black might've looked better, you know, but, you know. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Mike. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Please, like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a real YouTuber would I, when you come up with some yeah. question, but no, seriously, I'm curious what people think. If they would rather go see black there with, I did black, the black register, obviously the lights are black and gold. I just think black would've probably been better. Yeah. White's not horrible, but I do think black would look Before better. Before people start going crazy, why are the lights offset? Obviously... Uh, yeah, they're offset three inches. And that is because a filler piece was added between the ice maker and the wine fridge, which pushed this cabinet array over three inches. So that's why. That's after all the electrical was done, everything. So it's, it's way too late to change anything at this point. So, and it's really not a big deal. It's, it's that much. I would prefer it being perfect, but it's not that big a deal. Okay, let's go up there and take a look at the, what's gonna be the end of me. Yeah. See what I did here? We, uh, we screwed a block to the ground so there's no way the ladder can kick out. I put rags on the top of the ladder so it can't scratch our painted finished ceiling. It's pretty good, it's pretty stout. And this ladder's ready for 300 pounds. I only weigh 175, so we're good. You want, you want me to go up there? Well, Matt's not here yet, but I'll go up there if you want. Let's see how safe it is. Look at it. It's solid. Solid as Sears. Oop. I just got to be careful of the fan. See? All the way up. The RD Pro's up here, so I have to reprogram that. Do the same there. I do have a little white paint I got to get off here. So, and in fact, you know, we have that cable that lowers this whole light. But we really don't need it because you can... You could get up here like I am on an extension ladder and change light bulbs if you wanted to. Because this light actually pivots right here. So you could, you, could, you could get up like, I think I could change these from here. Because look, you can pull this towards you, change light bulbs. I mean, it goes further than that. It's easy peasy. So that when Matt, when get, Matt gets done with his meeting, we'll uh, reprogram this. And then um, I've got to do that one too. So. No problem, Mike. We'll get you up there. It's only 30 feet down there. I mean, you'd have to, you'd have to try to jump off, you know. Yeah. It can't, can't slide, so there's no way anything's going to happen. So as you can see, the, the baseboards are all done up here, so they just have to recode them. But anyway, I think this is enough talking, Mike. We need to get to work. Uh, keep holding. Huh? I got nothing. Hey, should be. There we go. I got it. It's weird. It did the same thing last time. I wonder why it didn't grab last time. Well, because I wasn't really ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that ties in the last of the lights. Nice. So now I've got the whole system online here. So the kitchen has three different switches. And then the master bedroom has chandelier, DMF lights, headboard DMF lights, left reading light, right leading light, headboard DMF Pico, headboard DMF Pico entry. Uh, and then we have actually two more Picos that will be in that room. So I do have to add two more. All of these exterior zones are controlled by some sort of Pico in one of the rooms. So when I, when I have a way, I have all the lights turning off. And so what I'm gonna do, the way I think about it, is if I'm gonna leave, 
I'm gonna hit away. It's gonna turn all the interior and exterior lights off. And because I have both my exterior soffit lighting and my porch lighting switches right next to that home and away. So like if it's in the daytime, I don't wanna turn on those lights. I'm gonna make sure they're all off. Everything's off when I leave. Uh, and so if I were going to leave and it was nighttime, I'd hit away, which would turn everything off and I'd hit the switch right next to it, which would be the porch lighting. It would turn that on as I'm leaving and just leave that on. And then I could always just tell Siri to turn that off whenever I'm done. So that system is done. All I have to do is transfer it to Adam. I can't do the Siri stuff now because I'm in the professional account. Uh, and so I'll show you at some point when I get Adam and Colette's phone set up, I'll show you how um, Siri works for this. You would just tell her what you want to do for the house. So I didn't do a home and away in the master bedroom because I think they would just tell Siri to just turn everything off. And it would turn everything off at night. So pretty awesome. Getting ready to burn up. So I've been waiting for this. Oh yeah. So this is, I want to say this is like the maybe eighth or ninth different hateful iteration I've done thus far. The struggle with this is there's a lot of choice, a lot of options. And I think these are the one, two, three types of drawers I think you're gonna, really gonna need. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the fourth would be the pegboard stuff. Right. Uh, so I've learned a lot of lessons. I'm many dollars. Oh, I know you are. I many, know you are. many, many dollars. May, I think that would be thousands. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, tens of. Yeah. <laughs> I know it seems so simple. You know, look at this, you're like, I need a knife block. I need a multipurpose insert. I need a stepped spice, you know, drawer. Uh, I know that I need that. I know I need to put some pegboards in for my, for my pots and pans, but it's not as, at least maybe I'm just an idiot, but it's not as simple as you think. The catalog's are giant. There's lots of choice. It's really expensive to make mistakes. And so I've made a lot of the mistakes so you don't have to. So after this project, uh, you'll go to obsessedgarage.com, go to shop uh, Obsessed Home, uh, and then the Hayfilla section. The team is gonna sort of follow my lead here, update the photos, update the description, and we're gonna build basically uh, a step-by-step -step process of what you would need to do to order this stuff. We're gonna do six drawers. So we're gonna do a spice drawer here. So this is gonna be our, our uh, stepped spice ladder. And this drawer is, I believe, 21 and an eighth. Uh, and so I ordered the 24 inch version. Then we're going to do a spatula drawer, which this is what it looks like. You know, normal people's drawers, I actually have some more spatulas and stuff coming um, that will line up and make, make, looking, uh, make look pretty in here. We're gonna do a knife drawer. So you could always leave your knives in a block. I like to put it in the drawer. Uh, so we're gonna do knives here. So my thought process is spatulas for cooking, um, spices for cooking, knives for cutting, and I would oftentimes probably cut here. Uh, and then my flatware is gonna go here. Our hand towels are gonna go here next to the sink. And then pots and pans are gonna go down underneath. So the pots and pans will go with the pegboard system here, if that makes sense. So we're gonna cut this to fit. So step one you would do in a Hayfield installation is figure out what drawers you wanna do and where your best flow would be for the kitchen. How, how am I gonna do that? How do I wanna set that up? Uh, then step two is I need to measure my drawers. So uh, this drawer was 33 and an eighth. Uh, and so that means I need to go look in the Hayfield catalog. In our case, you just look at the Obsessed Garage website, say, okay, I'm gonna do spatulas. I, need, I know I need a multi-purpose insert because that's what Matt told me I needed to do. Uh, and so then, in order for that to fit, I order the 36 inch version. The 36 inch version, I believe is 34 inches wide. Uh, and so this is a 36 inch multi-purpose insert. What you want, you could do this with a circular saw, it would suck. Um, you want to either buy or rent a table saw. We'll show you, we'll show you what, what, what we're gonna do there. So let's get rolling. You like doing this? Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's kind of done a lot of the work in that he's figured out which are the easiest, most usable parts and pieces. So I've screwed this up royally mm -hmm. and then screwed up a little less and a little less yeah. and a little less. You got it. You're getting, a, it's a little more refined. Well, I would just, because I do this for a living, I mean, I could order like massive excess. Yeah. 
Anyway, let's get let's get moving here, Mike. What are yeah, we you're really holding up show here. Too too much talking, not enough working. Yeah. We need a, I need a better tape measure. We don't need. I mean, I can measure for him. I don't know what he's doing. Like he's, he thinks he's going to measure better than me, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. You're cutting at this t this tight and tolerance. What I would say to do is get a test piece, a piece of scrap wood. Set your blade because you have kerf that you have to worry about. You can take a little nick out of a, out of a scrap piece of wood, measure your length of cut, and then you'll know whether you've got it or not. Yeah, why don't if, you do that for me? Then? <laughs> I will do that. Is, yeah. it, on this, you want to cut. You want to really measure what you're what you're what you're removing more than anything. So you're supposed to be showing people how to do this easily. Well, it is easy. I'm telling you, it's easier to set the rip fence to the dimension you want to remove rather than trying to have this big piece mm, yeah. against the rip fence. You know what I mean? I normally just eyeball my line. Well, I know you do. That's why yours don't fit very well. Mine are pretty good. <laughs> That's because you've spent $10,000 just to get <laughs> new ones that you've ruined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, so what we're doing is we're going to remove 7 16 off of this. Okay, so we just need yeah. to set our blade, uh, you know, against the fence, 7 16 right. well, Okay. Just, just show them how to do it. Let's go, Mike. Come on. So, because, so we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, so that long piece is going to be out here and we're gonna cut off 7 16 So we're gonna to sit to this side of the blade. We're gonna remove 7 16 right? So that is gonna be right there. And then what I suggest doing is taking a piece like this, because you don't wanna screw up your expensive hay fork. And you make, do a little test nick like that, and then you can see exactly how much you are removing. And we are right at 7 16 So it's that line right there. So that should do it. It's half inch, half inch with one baby. Half inch minus a baby line. Yeah. As you always say. No, minus a baby, yeah, yeah. That's minus a baby. Cut it wrong. Minus a baby. Yeah, you would have yeah. that would have been nine sixteenths. So now we're cutting thin material so we can lower the blade. Yeah. You wanna do it? You no. Do it. no. Heck no. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just asking. You could, Mike. This is pretty easy to do. So that's going to be a pretty tight fit. You want to go check it? Yep. No. Too tight. Too tight? Mm -hmm. You got a 30 second long then, or what? How tight are we? Too tight. Let me see. It might go. Yeah, that's pretty. It's good on this end. And there you go. We want a pressure fit, you said, so. Yeah, that's what I want. Now I have to slide it back, right? There you go. So it's that 30 second that gives you the pressure switch, the mm -hmm. pressure fit. Yeah. All the way down. Do you still have to put double side tape? Because that's no, not going anywhere. No, we don't, yeah, we don't need tape if, it, if it's tight. The okay. tape I'll use on the uh, inserts. Do you have the other piece out there that I'm cutting? Yeah. So that you're going to have to raise the blade up. Yep. This one I think we'll probably put a... So we have to cut the length, the depth too. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So. Three and a sixteenth. Well, since you have that blade set up, should, you want to cut the other long drawer? No, let's do this real quick. Yeah. I, I don't mind moving I would it. Do. I would yeah, cut them all. That way I don't have to move the blade too many times. I'm like, oh, that, that one works, so I would just roll through. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll end up like my hair cut. I might have to take a sixteenth off of there. Yeah, I'll take a sixteenth. We don't need any tape for this one. That's that looks good. nice. Yeah, we have some more utensils coming, but what I'll what I'll generally do is do this kind of kind of thing here. Can still slide around a bit. The other thing you could do if you care, well, I like the look better, but you could line this in here so that it's grippy. I like it like that. Uh, I prefer it this way and just you know. I mean, they can only go so far, <laughs> so. Yeah, right. Oh, 
I'll probably come back to this like six or eight times to see how I like it. Yeah. That's good. And you have this back here too. Like if you want to put something there, you can do that. This is an interesting drawer because they cut it down for a cooktop, which our cooktop, we don't need it. It's pretty sick. That's drawer number one. So let's, let's do the knife drawer. Okay. So some people prefer to keep their knives on the, on the countertop. I mean, I'm, I'm torn. These are darn close. I think this one. What do you want to do? We should cut it equally. And we reserve this. So I think we'd be better off. Three sixteenths of size. Yeah. Okay. That's too much. This is one of the most expensive pieces. I think this one's like two something for this piece. This one might not flex as much. We can take a blade with, you sure? Okay. And you want to pressure fit, so that's what I did. There we go, that's it. Okay. That's where it's at. So here's the difference between a $200 set of knives. This is a $200 Henkels. I bought these for Scott because he has some, what are those things? Uh, I don't know, but they rust Cuisinart. Cuisinart knives in the coach. And so I bought him a set of uh, Henkels, a couple hundred bucks for a whatever, however many piece set versus a $1,000 set of Yaxel Ren, Ron. So, I have these exact knives in Helen, uh, and then the Super Gal would be probably 3,000 bucks for the set of the Super Gal stuff. But these are great. Japanese Damascus, really cool. So these are gonna go in the coach. These are going in Adam's new arsenal of knives. And what I generally do is take the steel and hide this, but we'll put it back here. I don't like to sharpen with these. I feel like it messes up the knives. So clearly we're gonna have some extra room here. So this is a preference thing. And if you want it in the drawer versus on the countertop. And then what I generally suggest you take your old knives, whatever old knives you had. So I'm sure they have a set of old knives and I would put some of those in here. Don't open boxes or do anything stupid with your Japanese knives. And let's say you had, like in my house, I have my old hankles and I just take my old hankles and I have them in here, you know, for the, Michelle doesn't use any of my super cow. She doesn't want to cut her arm off. Uh, and so that's generally how I'd recommend you set it up and then my my shears will go back here and put those back there I have another set of shears coming as well and then you just throw away your block where it's at Mike that's yeah that's right. nice reminds me of Helen mm -hmm. so three almost three and a sixteenth This guy back here. And then, see these guys don't fit. And so generally what I'll do is take those, those back there as well. And I got my knife drawer. I guess we can take them apart. Yeah, I was gonna say they could do this. Well, they don't fit in there anyway. Yeah. All right, forget that idea. Yeah, you want them leaning that way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
It's more natural to grab from this side. Though. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you. It's okay. All right. All right. Next up is Which the one? spice drawer. So that's this over here. I'm waiting on the spices to arrive. And so this one gets the step. Yeah. They just like this. Yeah, yep. And they. Yep. Nice. So these actually. So kind of level. That's cool, man. So we only have to cut these. Yeah, this way. And then this that way. filler goes in the back. Yeah. yeah. The right. All right. Let me get a exact measurement. So lesson learned on these is um, they sell dowels, triangle dowels, and they sell cylinder ones, but they don't work very well. And so what I'm going to do with these is just use the separators. And luckily, this one's tall, just the right height. And I'm going to just corner this up and pick a, you know, pick a spot where it goes, you know, something like this, and then it'll, ha it'll have a spot. Now, these things here are not most efficient; they're just the prettiest, right? So you're losing. You're not going to gain. You're not going to have as much space in your cabinet as you normally would. In our case, we've got more cabinets than we know what to do with. So um, I would. Uh, I, I do these in my, in my kitchen as well because I have got more cabinets than I do stuff. Uh, and so I want it to look, look pretty. And so I think this is the way to go. That looks great. Waiting on UPS delivery because I bought them a Organic Valley or something like that. And it's all gonna be all lined up, all matching. It's gonna look sick. Lennox Gorham, it's my favorite utensil line. Not super expensive. I think it was like 140 bucks for a 12, 12 set. Yeah. It's not terrible. I mean, not cheap, but. It's a pretty tight tolerance there. Yep. So now this, this flatware drawer, what we do is we put our multi-purpose inserts in or sorry, cross slot dividers. And the dividers are how we do our flatware. They have several different inserts like this. I really only use these. They, they accidentally sent me, uh, this was mislabeled in the box, but you can do a knife block like this too. What so do I have depth wise, three inches roughly? Three and a sixteenth. Mm, pretty close to three and an oh. I've got my insert in there. Yeah, three and a sixteenth light. But see, you have knife blocks too, where you can fit this. They have a spice holder as well, which I never really had any use for. They also do a stepped spice holder as well, which you can buy as an insert. I generally only buy these guys. And so they actually have a, a silverware drawer. They have a cutlery drawer as well. The problem with, um, so they call this a multi-purpose insert. The most common one they sell is called a cutlery drawer. But what they have is they have dividers, but they only have three wide and then they do two, so two horizontal, three, three vertical. But I want all my flatware to line up and match. And so that's why I put these in. Multi-purpose inserts, or, or sorry, cross lot dividers. No tape needed. And then these guys, these we will tape. Otherwise they, you know, they move around a little bit. That's factory slot though. Yep. So, looks great. And we can always cut this to fit in there. Yeah. All right, so the pegboard, mm -hmm. let's cut it a little short. And then when we put it in, I'll just put one in the middle somewhere and then we can lift it back out. Because I've got a, I've got a test fit all my pots and pans in there. Because the pegboard, we have to access the underside in order to screw the pieces together. How could we modify? What so, do you want to do? Here's the problem with the knives. So the knives don't fit. Mm -hmm. But if the knives are over here. 
I'm sliding around. Just take this, because this is the end of it, and just cut it a chunk as a stop for in here, you know? Make a divider so it's, you know, cut it this make, width. Yeah, make our own divider, yeah. And just pressure, you know, have it yep. in there with tape. I like that. If idea. you want to give it a little fudge in case they get different like knives, or do you want to make it <laughs> tight fit? Your call. Yeah, I think a little, little distance makes you know, sense. Yeah. Could do the same thing over there and split it. I don't think so, because we do have the other utensils. Yeah. Let me just stack them up, just because all the others are stacked up too. And what I normally would probably do here is do four and four. Just because it looks cooler. I have two sets, so I have eight and eight. There's your sugar spoon. But these don't fit here. Well, I guess maybe it does. Do these fit? Yeah, so no, these are That's what go I'll over put there. over there, yeah. All the serving utensils go on the right. right. Then we could do another one of these if you wanted to over there, but. You know, so as I'm putting all this stuff together and putting all the things in it, you know, I haven't figured everything out yet. And this excites me that say, you know, I was watching a lot of all the videos and watching people commenting about, well, what about this? What about that? Well, we haven't figured out everything yet. There's still products left to find, but I think we've got them in a pretty good spot to start. Great. Another way, <laughs> I just just hit me. Just kind of completes the drawer. You have some open slots. Some Matty Mormon silverware for when you visit. You have your own. Yeah, my own silver. Yeah, yes. Silver plated. Yeah. Good yeah. looking drawer. Well, Clint has a side for all her pink silverware. Jesus. It's good. It's real good. You even organize their closet, throwing out clothes you don't think they need to wear. <laughs> All right, so we need to chop this one. That Milwaukee saw, by the way, if you buy a Hayfla, buy one of those from us because that's the saw you need to do all this. It's perfect for this job. Seriously. Give you a good excuse, yeah. Yeah, get that it's saw. a good reason to do it. Tell your wife, hey, I'm gonna do this stuff, but listen, I don't have the right saw for the job. No, seriously, I mean, and you, you, you don't wanna do this with a skill saw, you know, with a, rear handled saw or a circular saw, it's too, it'd be too wonky. You want to use a little, uh, little battery powered Milwaukee. So and you can buy the saw and, you know, you could do is just include it in the purchase and say, look, babe, this is how much all the hay for the cost. Yeah. Well, that's about 350 bucks more than I thought it would be. Well, you know, that's well, you, not, well, you mean 900. Well, yeah, I guess so. Well, you could buy a tool only. All right. You so ready? This one? Yep. So, this pegboard has little feet. Mm -hmm. and so we're gonna cut equal off both sides, equal off front and back, is that what you wanna do? Yeah, in a perfect world, that's what you do. So you cut all four sides. The, no, they're just stuck on there. Yeah, and we only need to cut a little bit. What, 3 sixteenths off each side, Seven, I think? Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'm ready for the soothing sound of a uh, Ruth's Chris sizzling plate. Oh, I'm ready. Do we have another one of those pegboards? Yep. Yeah. Same exact thing? Yep. I might not be able to finish this until I get the other uh, two pots and two pans that I've come in. I don't have plenty of room to fit the other two non-sticks right there. These are going to go like this. Makes me happy. Boom. We'll have the other two when they arrive. It's not too heavy. You know, that's the other thing you gotta be careful with too many pots and pans in a drawer and it's too heavy and it sags. And then we got this. Got some more stuff coming. I'm gonna tape this down. I wonder if our spices have arrived yet. Our knives, I forgot about the knives, that's sick. And then we've got this. 
This is where our hand towels will go. I screwed up. I ordered uh, the washcloths, not the hand towels. Solid door. Probably need a little bit more. It's still a little out. Huh? Going the wrong way. We need to worry about front to back more front than Front to back, we're dead nuts. Okay, well then let's call that. Because once we get them joined together, I think that's, because that's, yeah. front to back to me is most important. Yeah, that's good. All right, so let's do that one. We'll make it the same as this one, basically. So right now we're flush the top and we're sticking out the well, bottom front, just. Front to back is dead nuts too. So really the, <laughs> we don't have to do anything. It's, it's perfect. That's it's it. perfect. Okay. All right, buddy. So this, now we have to take these joiner brackets. They go on the top and one goes on the bottom and bottom at the, in the, in the back side. And uh, join them together. Here, Maddie. I'm good here. Good. Okay. How are you looking? Pretty good. Now we got so it's zero clearance anyway. So yeah. we could go back further. On, on this side, but not that side. Michael, I'm installing the microwave slash convection oven. So, getting this done, and then the uh, oven needs to go in, and then all the appliances will be done. Yeah. Disposal's in, wine fridge is in. Big achievement. The refrigerator freezer took some time. That was a little bit of work. There's a lot that goes into that. If you didn't attach them to the wall, when you open this door and it's got a bunch of weight in it, the whole thing would fall over. So, and then I had to add this filler piece. Nice. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. All right, so I'll do Matt's debadging for him. He'd probably have to take, stealing his thunder here, but since I install it, I get to take the sticker off. So anyway, it's a microwave oven. But it also, I, it kind of, I think it does like convection and air fry. Air fry yeah, so it's kind of like what home, um, Starbucks uses to heat your uh, whatever it is. I get a bacon gouda with sriracha, Mike. Right. Yeah. I've seen you go ham and Swiss a couple of times. I have. Those are pretty good, but I don't really eat that stuff anymore, honestly. I'm being honest. I mean, it's, it still really tastes good, but I just get blonde roast Americanos now, Michael. Oh, you like cake pops, Austin? Yeah. Austin likes cake. It's his yeah. sweet tooth over there. Yeah. 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 yeah no, I've, I, I've had one years ago. So now all that's left is the, uh, the oven. So I'm going to go grab the install instructions for the oven and see if it's a similar situation where I have to, because what, what it is, is that the, the way this Fulger Milano is, is they want it, they don't want a protruding face frame. So they want, they want the face frame flush with the box. So it sits on the box. So their opening is, they're thinking the box opening sh should be their finish opening. Well, that's not the way most cabinets are built. So what we did was we put a three quarter inch piece of uh, material and there was shelving, shelving material that was left over so that everything was on the same plane as the outside of the face frame. So we might have to do that with the oven too. Oh yeah. We're about done with this place. Should I put some nozzle on for you? Ooh, yeah. Temporarily. Yeah, that's good. Ready? Yep. Okay. I think the cable's that's it. it. There's my other finger. Yeah, that's it. Wait, I think it should go. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it. Damn. All right. You got a little click right at the end? Nice. Yep, now we just need to get a couple screws. It's our first trial of uh, Fulger Milano, so I'll let you debadge it. Okay, Hefele is done, which looks fantastic. As you can see in the earlier part of the episode, I love this stuff. I'm gonna do it in my house. I have the stuff, but I just haven't done it yet. I get to remodel my kitchen, but this makes me excited to do it. And uh, the appliances are now all in, officially in and running. The only thing I have to do is get a couple of different breakers, size breakers for the uh, for the microwave 
class convection, and then the oven. They're, they're sized in, in appropriately, so we'll have to get those. Obviously, the wine fridge is in, ice maker's in, fridge freezer are in. No, I mean, hopefully it would come back and it looks a lot cleaner. It will be a lot cleaner. Then we just really have some odds and ends to do, and we're, uh, we'll be good. Pa oh, the painters are here. They're redoing baseboards, touching up, that kind of stuff. So he's got it. He took care of that above the uh, yeah. wave tile today. We might really only have like one, maybe two more episodes of the vlog. Yeah, I think right. this, yeah, I think so. And then there'll be obviously the videos where you have Eastside and Laurel and Chris. The build part of it's probably an episode or two more, huh? Mm -hmm. We don't really have a whole lot left to do. Monday, Tuesday, we'll tinker around getting all the little odds and ends done, and then we'll come back to a clean house. I think Wednesday, everybody's coming to check it out from OG, maybe. So is this the end of this episode, Michael? It is, Mike. People need to like and subscribe. So Please like and subscribe. And uh, comment below if you think Matt lo is looking fitter. Fitter, no way. I'm More fit. All losing it all. It's all falling apart. Oh, no. I didn't take you to go get your no, cheddared I'm bunnies. I don't weight, but I'm sure I'm losing my gains. Nah. All right. You can edit all that out, Michael. Please.